Callum and Tessa first crossed paths ages ago at a wedding. Both were tagged along as plus ones by their significant others, from whom they'd eventually parted ways. During the festivity, they found themselves deep in conversation. With a nod from his then-girlfriend, Callum asked Tessa for a dance, marking the last moment they shared that day. Their paths didn't cross again until much later. By that point, Tessa was managing affairs as an administrator in a private clinic, and Callum happened to book an appointment there. Seizing the opportunity, he boldly asked the charming Tessa out. Though still reeling from a rough breakup, Tessa hesitantly accepted his overture. Fast forward to today, and the couple was joyously marking their eighth wedding anniversary. The seventh year of matrimony proved to be challenging. In line with psychological norms, they experienced a crisis that they were still grappling with. This predicament was due to Callum's unfortunate descent into the world of gambling. Initially, no one noticed it, and Callum himself was reluctant to acknowledge his troubled state. Consequently, they found themselves locked in frequent disputes, to the point where they couldn't recall the last time they had a normal conversation as husband and wife. Whenever the topic of Callum's addiction arose, it would spark confrontations and lead to his wife expressing her grievances. In an attempt to escape the family dynamics, Callum sought refuge with a friend on several occasions. Tessa, on her part, was determined to rescue her spouse from this perilous situation. She proffered various treatment options, footed the bill for a psychologist, and even resorted to taking him to a fortune teller who claimed to have insight into addiction. Regrettably, all her efforts were in vain. With each passing day, Tessa felt her optimism waning. The fear within her deepened when she uncovered the extent of her husband's financial woes. His phone was incessantly buzzing, overwhelmed with relentless calls from creditors and debt collectors. Whenever Callum barricaded himself in the bathroom to deal with them, Tessa would stealthily listen in on his conversations. Later, she would find solace in the solitude of the kitchen, quietly sobbing into the night while drowning her anxiety in liquor. Callum, everything that's happening terrifies me. She confessed to her husband one evening over tea. Tessa felt it was critical to express her anxieties to Callum. I'll handle it, he responded softly, realizing that Callum's effort to rectify the situation might drag on. Tessa knew she had to take action herself. Unwilling to abandon her husband, her love for him spurred her to undertake bold actions. Tessa remembered the rich man who had courted her once, a few years ago. He showered her with gifts and brought luxurious bouquets to her at work. But Tessa, trying not to hurt his feelings, politely refused him. At the clinic, she found his phone number and decided to call him during a break. At first, the man did not recognize her, but eventually he invited her to meet. With a heavy heart, she agreed. She lied to Callum, saying she went to meet her buddies, but actually went to the restaurant to meet Duke. Throughout the evening, she drowned her embarrassment in glass after glass of wine. Gathering her courage at last, she laid out her predicament to Duke. I'm facing a tough spot right now. I'm willing to be with you, but it'll cost you, she confessed. Duke's face twisted into a sly grin. Leaning in, he replied in a sly whisper, I'm game for whatever arrangement you propose. Encounters with her paramour became customary. The chauffeur fetched Tessa from her workplace and chauffeured her to the flat that Duke had procured for their rendezvous. He continued to court her and lavish her with presents. Upon breaking things off with him, Tessa received a generous sum of money in her account. She was growing accustomed to the routine and eagerly anticipated each encounter. You've been spending a lot of time at the office. Callum grumbled jealously one morning. Tessa looked at him reproachfully, as if you don't know why I'm working extra shifts. A little gratitude wouldn't hurt. She snapped at her husband. I'm trying to kick my habit, Callum exclaimed. He anticipated that a fresh round of arguing was about to commence, but Tessa coolly rolled her eyes and stowing her lipstick in her purse, bid him farewell. Callum was nose deep in work and chipping away at his debts. He noticed just how hard she was busting her chops to support him. Eager to pull his weight, he pumped every spare dime he could into repayment. 
but there were so many lenders breathing down his neck that staying offload seemed impossible. His phone buzzed constantly, bursting with threatening calls and messages from some dubious characters to whom he owed money. Callum couldn't just turn a blind eye to this mess, but on the flip side, he was well and truly in over his head. Meanwhile, Tessa was at home when the doorbell echoed through the apartment. Following the chime were two heavy knocks. Peering cautiously through the peephole, she saw a burly, intimidating figure standing ominously in the hallway. Open up, I'm here about your husband. The deep, menacing voice rumbled. Taking a deep breath, she unlocked the door. The man, wasting no time, gave the door a hefty shove and barged into the apartment. He informed her that Callum had borrowed an excessively large amount of money from him, but displayed no sense of urgency in repaying it. The man had exhausted all the given deadlines, yet the funds had not appeared in his account. Your Callum isn't answering calls, so I had to come here, the uninvited guest remarked. He plopped down on the sofa, spreading his legs wide. His overall demeanor exuded self-assurance in himself and his actions. Tessa felt a surge of fear, her hands growing cold and goosebumps creeping down her back. What do you suggest I do? She stammered, her voice trembling. I don't have any money either. I'm just an administrator, making ends meet by paying off my husband's debts. What's your name? The man inquired, as if he hadn't caught her previous words. Tessa. The woman responded softly. I'm Cruz. Why do you stick around with him? You should have left a long time ago. What do you need her for? Cruz inquired. Tessa was at a loss for words when he posed the question. She had been wrestling with the same issue herself for a considerable period. Yet a satisfactory response eluded her. Cruz gestured invitingly at the space next to him on the couch. Tessa hesitated, torn, yet she eventually took a seat beside him. Deep down, she sensed what was imminent and might have even been anticipating this exchange. Alone at the table with her coffee, she mulled over the recent events. Cruz had committed to coming back in a few days to settle a portion of the debt. The mere idea of being near him sent her emotions into a whirlwind. She pictured his firm grip around her waist, feeling an eager anticipation for their forthcoming rendezvous. Over the recent days, she had visited Duke's residence, collected some cash, and acquired yet another pair of earrings. Post that encounter, she spent several hours on a park bench, swigging wine directly from the bottle in an attempt to quash her swirling thoughts and feelings. Cruz arrived punctually as he had promised. Tessa detected two sharp knocks on the door and instantly knew it was him. With a definitive gesture, the visitor brushed past her and entered the flat. Tessa extended a bulging envelope, packing every dime she had extracted from her bank. It's not complete. She started, yet Cruz cut her off. In a swift motion, he grabbed her wrist, causing her to tumble onto his lap. Meanwhile, a weary Callum was trudging home after a draining day at work. His mind was swamped with thoughts about his mounting debts, his wife, and the state of their union. Each step he took, he hoped things were on the brink of improvement. But adversity kept dragging their lives down. Reaching his doorstep, he was taken aback to find it unlashed. Peculiar, he thought, given his wife should have been at her job. The gentleman cracked the door open gingerly and paused to listen. Mere moments later, subtle sounds and stifled groans reached his ears. A chill ran through Callum's veins. With equal caution, he entered, and glancing around the room, his eyes fell upon Tessa gyrating rhythmically atop another man. It took barely a breath for him to recognize the man beneath her. Instantly, Tessa's eyes locked with her husband's. She let out a yell and scrambled off Cruz. Cruz, for his part, nonchalantly began to pull on his trousers, throwing a challenging look towards the crestfallen husband. Callum understood that confronting Cruz physically was out of the question. The man's size alone promised a losing battle. The scales of brawn were decidedly in the lender's favor, prompting Callum to merely stand by, a silent sentinel, until the man exited. Once the door had closed behind Cruz, Callum turned his gaze towards his wife, his expression etched with confusion and hurt. 
Tessa spoke about the sad incident, telling how crews arrived to collect the dead, stressing that this was not the first time. However, she chose not to mention Duke. Bearing the burden of responsibility, Callum made a difficult verdict. He would forgive his wife, fully realizing that he was to blame for all this. Determined to make amends, he worked hard, working extra evening shifts as a taxi driver, giving Cruz every last penny. At the time, the debt was repaid, but Callum could not get rid of the guilt of his wife's betrayal, although he was forced to do so. The image of what he had witnessed on that fateful evening was constantly in his mind's eye. After much discussion with Tessa, they decided to embark on the path of divorce. Callum later learned from mutual acquaintances that Tessa had sought solace from the same lender who had lured them into a trap, and as it turned out, they even had a child together. In addition, he still did not pay attention to the location and affairs of his ex-wife, and Callum himself admitted that he would never associate himself with the gambling world again.